Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. Every time I start a video, I do this thing with my chair, which is, I don't know why, why I do that, but anyway. So uh, yeah, um, let me just think about if there's any news or anything. I don't think there's any important news. Uh, the Maxon ZBrush thing has been announced for a couple of weeks now, just so you guys know. Uh, we're gonna be using ZBrush today, that's why I mentioned this. Um, there's gonna be the ZBrush Summit, they do this every year and it's usually in the later months of the year. So in this case, it's gonna be in November. Uh, we're probably gonna be live streaming the main uh, event Probably, I'm not sure yet, depending if uh, work allows it. Uh, but the important news, what everyone's waiting for is to know whether or not they're gonna be um, giving the new updates for free to users who had the uh, perpetual license before the merge, or uh, like, what's the cost gonna be? Hopefully the cost is not as high, like Seabrush is a very, very pricey program. It's uh, like $800 or something like that. So hopefully, I would be willing to pay like $100, maybe $200 if the like the updates are really, really good. Hopefully they give them for free. Everyone, like Maxon wants you to jump into the monthly subscription, of course, because they get to charge you forever, um, which again, we've mentioned that it's useful sometimes, but for someone that uses it all the time, like myself, I, I prefer having a perpetual license. Anyways, that's uh, the big news for this one. Um, other than that, I don't think we have anything else. We are releasing new courses in the next coming days, uh, so stay tuned. And you guys know that we can access or you can access those courses for free by using our Skillshare promotion. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just want to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here and Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. My hair was really fluffy back there <laughs> when I recorded that video. Uh, anyway, so today I want to talk about, about a very specific topic, which is the construction of a face. We're going to be focusing on the female face in this case, but um, the, most of the principles that I'm going to be mentioning will work for a male or a female face. Now, why is this important? The faces are probably one of the most like tricky parts to, to sculpt and to do well. And um, it, it's one of those struggles because we see faces all the time, we see characters all the time, so we want to do that. But unfortunately, it's not one of those skills that you can learn at the very first like uh, go, right? Like it takes some time and some practice to really nail that down. Um, back in the day, back in, this was 2011, so 11 years ago when I first jumped into, into the 3D. Some of you might already know this, but I was actually uh, studying uh, for uh, medicine. I was going to become a doctor. And then I decided that that, well, it's not that I decided, I realized that that's not what I wanted to do. And thanks to uh, the support from my parents, I was able to make the transition into a game art, game development. So uh, back then, when I, I went to a couple of like a traditional art uh, like classes, like drawing and painting and stuff like that, and I had a teacher, um, she was really patient with me because I was a complete mess. Like I knew absolutely nothing about art. And I was like 20 years old, right? So, um, so she helped me and uh, she showed me that once you practice something a lot of times, you're going to get better and better and better at it. But there's a catch. You can't just practice and that's it. You need to practice with a specific purpose. So it's not the same to just like do a lot of stuff willy-nilly and actually like focusing and saying, okay, this time around, I'm going to be focusing on improving the eyes. I'm going to be focusing on improving the mouth or the nose or like the, the general shape, right? Like you always need to have a goal set for yourself whenever you're uh, trying to learn something because otherwise it just becomes information that you're just receiving. And again, as long as you're not like actually uh, like making sense of that information, you're going to have a bad time. I'm, um, I'm struggling with that in one of my hobbies right now, which is uh, chess. I've mentioned this before as well, but I like to play chess. And um, there's a couple of openings that I really struggle against. And unless I actually go in and study, I'm just not going to get better at them, right? So um, so that's what we need to do. So anyway, I'm starting here with the Dynamesh Sphere. And the first thing I need to focus is the general shape of the head. And usually the the length of this, like depth of the head, should be roughly the same as the, as the length on the front of the head, like this. 
Uh, it can change, of course, characters can be slightly different, but in general, that's the, the sort of rule that we follow. And when seen from the front, one very common mistake is that people keep this very round face. And you can see, if you look at me at the camera, it's more like a squarish face. Even if I have a round face, it's not gonna be like completely round. Like you're, you're still gonna have a sort of like oval looking shape. I like to use the trim dynamic on this one. So I'm gonna use trim dynamic here to, to flatten the sides of the head because one of the ways I, I really like to work when uh, blocking in my characters is I like to use this sort of uh, plane construction because it, it really allows me to, to visualize how things are gonna be. So there we go, that looks good. Now, um, one of the most like common mistakes that they see people make when they make characters, it's the neck. The neck is one of those areas that gets really tricky. Let me go into a side view right here. And if I'm in the side view, you can see I have a <laughs> relatively fat neck, but you can see that it goes forward, right? It's not pointing straight up, it's going forward towards my head. Uh, you can also see it here in the little like um, seabrush guy. So that's what we need to do. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna mask out a circle on the, on the back of the head. I'm gonna invert the mask and with W, I'm gonna bring it down. This is what everyone does. It just they just bring the head down and and yes, it's gonna give you a good result. It's not gonna be the best result. So you wanna push it back like this. There's always gonna be a little bit of an angle. Now, why do we see it uh, as if it's uh, if it's straight though? Well, that's because there's a couple of things that are gonna be going on here. First of all, we're gonna remove some volume back here. Things a little bit too much because on the back of the head, you should always have a little bit of a, of a gap right there, which is where the skull um, kind of like pokes out and you have the insertions of the, of the different muscles. Now at this point, what's gonna happen, I'm gonna use my move brush here, is we push the torso forward. So by pushing the torso forward, it gives the illusion that the neck is really straight because we have a shape that's pushing forward. But again, it's not really like that way. Another very common mistake, people will make the shoulders like this. They will just like push out the shoulders. And when you see the character from the front, you're not gonna see the neck. And you should always see a little bit of the neck because the insertion point of this thing is actually a little bit lower. So I'm gonna go with my clay buildup here. I'm gonna carve in a little bit of volume here because again, the neck should remain very, very, very straight or quite straight like this. And on the back, here's where we're gonna have the muscle, the trapecius muscle. So um, another teacher that I had, this is one of, I get this question a lot, like, should you go to the school? One of the, the cool things about going to a school or to a university and stuff like that is that you get a lot of different perspectives because you usually get a lot of teachers. So they teach you different methods and different uh, techniques and stuff. And that's always helpful. Like I, I'm trying to teach you as many like different options as possible, but at the end of the day, it's just me, right? So, um, so that's, I would say one of the uh, pluses about going into a, a university. So there we go. Now I do feel the head's a little bit big, so I'm gonna just like use my move brush to, to make it smaller. And as, as we move forward with the next uh, like couple of planes that we're gonna be doing, uh, it should look a little bit better. Usually female necks tend to be a little bit slimmer uh, than, than male necks, so we might wanna slim that down a little bit. But see how, how I'm trying to create, oh. BCB, BB, there we go. I'm trying to create this again, this flat line. When you see the character from the front, you should see the flat line of the neck and then it goes into, there we go. And then it goes into the trapezius muscle. It gets softer depending on the character, of course, but you're usually gonna see that sort of uh, that sort of thing. So it's gonna be straight. And then we see the the inclination of the, of the shoulder. See how that looks a lot better? Again, because we're seeing a little bit of this line right here. So the um, uh, the advice that I was giving, uh, think about the neck as a, as a coat hanger, right? So it's this sort of like triangular looking shape, but it's a little bit flat and then it has a hook. So if you if you position the, the hanger right here, you're gonna see that sort of shape. So it's like, imagine the coat hanger going here, it's going to the sides and then down like this, okay? So that's why this part right here looks a little bit straight. Now, you should always, always mark your symmetry line. I know we do have symmetry by default here instead of Seabrush, but by marking it, it's gonna be a little bit easier to understand where the different parts of your of your head are gonna be. Same for the side, let's mark a side line here, and we go to the top. Now, why is this important? Because when we mark the, the, like the middle section line here for the female face, or, or any face in particular, you're gonna find that this is where the eyes are gonna be. So I'm gonna use my clay buildup here to create the uh, cavity of the eyes, the eye sockets. It's usually like a, like a sad face. A lot of people do like this angry face. I like to do angry expressions. It's very easy to do an angry, angry expression. 
Uh, but in this case, it's it's just like a like a sad face. So you can see there's a little bit of an angle there. Now that I have this, once I, again, this is my, my general process when blocking in a head. In production, that's another thing that I need to mention. In production, you're not normally going to be doing everything from scratch because, again, time is money. So if I can save myself an hour of uh, sculpting a character and I can just grab a base mesh, I'm just going to use a base mesh. But it's very important that you know how to do it. And this is a question that I've been getting a lot from my students, especially the newer students that are a little bit more aware of the new tools that we have out there. They're like, well, we have met the humans now. Why should I learn how to do proper like face anatomy and face sculpting if I can just do a meta human or a character creator or anything like that? And the thing is, you might not always be asked to do that kind of characters. If you're going to be doing like generic, uh, like realistic uh, kind of characters, then yeah, like technically you wouldn't need to learn anything else. But what's going to happen if you have a client or a project and you need to do like a like a gnome or a dwarf, or you need to do like an ogre or an orc, right? Like in fantasy settings, or you need to do an alien and you're going to go for this like, uh, uh, you guys uh, remember, um, huh, there we go. I was playing chess. I lost the last one. Key Adi, no, I actually won the last one. Key Adi Mundi. So you guys know this guy from Star Wars? Like, you can't do this guy with metahumans. I mean, you can get something close to the face and then tweak it, but you're going to have to sculpt it. Like, there's no way around this. The, the, like, there's no metahumans for, like, creatures and every single specific concept art that you might find out there. Um, yes, you can use it as a base, but again, it's not going to give you the best results. So that's why it's very, very important that you know how to do it from scratch. Now, I'm going to go here with BDS, uh, which is the Damien standard, and there's a very common... Uh, thirds that we divide the head into. We go to the hairline, which is this one right here. So in this case, it will be like right about there, that will be my hairline. And then from the hairline to the chin, we're gonna divide the head into three sections. So it's gonna be one right here, one right here, and of course the chin. It should be fairly, fairly uh, similar. It doesn't need to be perfect, but again, it's just an approximation. So right about there. On this one, on this first third, the important thing is that here we're gonna have the eyebrows eventually. Uh, this is, again, where the hairline begins. So if we're going to be doing some sort of uh, like a hairstyle or whatever, that's where we would be like seeing the, the hair coming from, like that. And uh, on the back part, this one is really important because the, the bottom or the top part of the last third, that's where the nose is going to end, right there. Some million ways to do noses. I'm going to show you one right here. You can mask out the shape of the nose, like roughly, and then control and just extrude it out. And I will move the pivot point to the base or the center of the nose so you can move it around and create this sort of like triangular looking shape. And that's going to give you a good approximation. Not going to be the best, but it's going to be a good approximation. I'm going to again go into trim dynamic, just like clean this up a little bit because right now what I'm focusing on is the silhouette. And talking about silhouettes, um, in the female face, one of the most common silhouettes is the silhouette that we get here on the eyes. For male faces, it's very common, and hopefully you can see here on my face, it goes straight, and then it creates a very sharp angle going towards the eyes, like a triangle here. They call this the keystone, and then it, it goes uh, out uh, towards the nose. The females, or in female faces, we get something very similar, but the reason or the difference is that we get this in a softer way. And male noses usually are very straight. Female noses tend to point up a little bit more. There we go. Again, not always. There's a lot of variation in, in the human race, even this. This that I'm showing you right now, this is like the canonical European way of doing uh, faces. It's what's been done in the industry for so long. And I know that uh, it's a good thing to, to have more inclusion, more representation. I, for once, would love to see more like Mexican characters in the in BD game scene in productions, we're gonna have a the first I think it's one of the first like Mexican uh, superheroes in Marvel with Namor, um, and that guy I, I don't look that much Mexican I think um, compared to like the average Mexican. My brother he's a lot uh, his skin is a lot darker and he has like closer factions to the traditional Mexicans that you might think of. Uh, like that more so it's always good to have uh, to have uh, what's the word representation um but even then all of these things that i'm talking about the only thing that changes is the amount like some people will have flatter noses or the curves are not going to be as intense or the nose is going to be like a little bit more like an uh, i think they call it like hook nose so but the same construction will apply so even if you are doing another type of uh, character you will still need to use all of this information so there you go. 
that's the that will be my my nose right here and again we can we can tweak it around and change around if we need to but that's usually the 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 sort of effect that we're gonna get now see how we get this very sharp angle right here that's what i want you guys to do when you're sculpting faces you should have depth to your faces faces are not flat um they they tend to have depth even if you again talking about certain ethnicities that tend to be flatter uh even those will have some sort of depth in the face so you should always want to exaggerate those depths and one of the reasons why we need to exaggerate those depths in 3d is because the 3d medium usually is seen on a 2d screen right like we usually see the characters on a tv screen or on our phones or on a on a, on a monitor and and 2d flattens things out so when we push the depth a little bit more than we would normally do in in reality we will get that sort of effect and that's not the only me speaking that's um if you have uh seen michelangelo's david right there's a there's a um there's a showing or what's the name i don't know like they have some replicas that are traveling around the world and showing a a life-size uh, statue of michelangelo it's not the original one but it's like a perfect cast if you if it ever goes to your country i strongly strongly recommend you go there and do some study because it's a it's an amazing piece of um a piece of um of uh, art uh and if of course if you have the opportunity to go to florence where this uh this one the, the real one is located um you should do it it's it's amazing so if you take a look at the face of michelangelo or in this case david you're gonna see that there's a lot of that like look at the distance between the bridge of the nose and the depth that we have all the way here towards the eye it's humongous and you can see it thanks to the shadows look at that like look at that it's 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 like it's it's gigantic no one or at least i have never met someone that has that much of depth on their face but he did it on purpose this was something that i was taught again by one of my sculpting teachers and he mentioned that uh, michelangelo knew that the statue was going to be seen at this distance like this is the normal distance that you see the statue you're never going to get this close to the to the face so that you can appreciate all of the details like this so since he knew that the statue on your like view was going to be relatively small compared to like the big size he had to exaggerate a lot of the things to make sure that they um that you could read those features from afar uh, there's another uh they, like like little like information bit that uh, i know about this statue i haven't like really like checked the sources to see if this is true or not but um someone told us or told me that the hands and the feet were not proportional to the character and you can see that he has like really really big hands and one of the reasons was he you, know, you were meant to see the, the the statue from from below and he kind of like took some perspective into account and he exaggerated certain things so that they would look better again i'm not sure if that's real or not but um the point is that the all of those things could matter at a, at a specific point um in the in the sculpting in the sculpting process so again look at the depth that's the depth that we want to create and right now by generating this like hollow sections right there we're going to be able to create adjust that after that i like to create the cheeks and the cheekbones uh which we know are this things called the sagamatic arc which is this one right here when you see the the face from the side you usually see that sort of like let me see if i can find the camera that's sort of like pointy bit right here so the sagamatic arc actually goes back towards the ear and that's why we had this uh, first uh, middle section here on the ear. We need to create the ear right here. Again, right now, I'm just going to block it in. I'm just going to creating this. I'm just creating this sort of like uh, blocking for the female face. And the, the ear is usually going to be aligned to the top third and the bottom third here on the, on the nose. So the size of your nose is usually the size of your ear. Again, usually. I'm going to use the Damien standard here to create like a little bit of a ridge on the on the ear so we get like the element right there i'm gonna carve in a little bit on the back here to create the separation there we go so that looks again quite symmetrical right there and right there and um here's where the jawline is gonna be now very common mistake with the jawline we need to make the jawline really 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 clean especially female characters that have this very nice sharp uh like um what's the word uh chin so I'm gonna create this really clean, but that doesn't mean that we don't have anything underneath. There's a muscle called the platysma. Platysma muscle. 
and this muscle is just like a like a, um, a like a sheet of muscle that goes from the from the chin all the way to the chest. It's very thin. You don't actually like develop this muscle so that it bulges out or anything. It's more like a like a thing that just holds everything together and gives a little bit of protection. Of course, you can see it like this. So when you see a um, female face side view, you're always gonna see, as you can see, a little bit of uh, roundness over there. Okay, so it's not, never going to be completely straight. There's always going to be a little bit of round. So this right here, that, that wouldn't fly. So I need to add a little bit of that, like volume. Like that. Now, I do think my neck is a little bit too far back. So I'm going to use my move brush to move it a little bit forward. Same for everything else. Let's just move the whole body forward. If at any point I feel like my head's a little bit small or a little bit big, we can change that. That's one of the great things about 3D art that uh, nothing is uh, permanent until you get to the final stages, right? Now, on the top side here, there's usually a flat area over here. That's, the, again, the shape of the, of the skull that we normally get uh, because we do have a very important bone, which is the frontal bone. Frontal bone is this one right here. There's usually like something called the frontal ridge. Well, I'm not sure if that's the official name. I like to call it like that. Uh, and here we usually have a, a little bit of a hollow section. The older you get, the more like um, the less elasticity your skin has, and it gets or it, it becomes a little bit easier to dehydrate. That's what some of the that's why some of the features in in older people get so exaggerated. So this is what we would get like roughly about there. Now the mouth. Mouth's one of those tricky areas, and I think this is probably gonna be the like the last part of this uh, this video. Let me know in the comments if you want me to continue. I I knew that it was not gonna be possible for me to sculpt like a perfect like female face in like 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, but let me know if you want me to continue. I just wanted to give you guys the basics of the of the female uh, face right here. So for the mouth, on the last third of our of our division, remember the the thirds that we have on the last third, on the first third, first third of the last third, that's where the mouth is going to be, which is going to be roughly about there, okay? Very common mistake is people place the mouth way too low, and therefore you don't have enough room for the chin and for the teeth and everything, and then it looks like a very weak uh, bite for your character. So the mouth is going to be roughly about there, and another important thing is the mouth should curve back. So I'm going to use my move brush here, and as you can see, I'm going to push the corner of the mouth back, because when you see the mouth, it should look like a U-shape. Okay, like a U-shape that goes like there. So, so it's very, very important that we properly create the space for the mouth. Usually there's going to be like hollow uh, points right here. If you are, if we're doing like a skull, all of this area is going to be kind of like hollow. And then we're going to fill those in with muscles and stuff. So one thing that I like to do sometimes is this process where I'm just going to hollow everything out. Imagine this is like a, like a skeleton. And then we'll start filling in. This is called the écorché method. It's a really good way to learn and to... Uh, and to properly place everything. So we're gonna do something like that. There we go. Now on the mouth, the female mouth, we're gonna need a little bit more resolution, but I'm gonna start blocking it in. Have the upper lip and then we have the lower lip. And if you take a look at the side view of your face, the lips are going like back in space. Again, in perspective, they're going back. Not everything is gonna be on a single plane. So when you see it from the side, things should be going back. So we're gonna start with the upper lips, right about there. And then the lower lips are going to be a little bit back. And there's going to be a hollow point, this one right here, below the, the lips. It's going to be like a, like a cavity right here. And then we're going to have the chin. Usually at this stage, I don't even like to do the lips. I just like to do something called the barrel of the mouth, which is the, just the volume that the mouth will normally occupy so that we can get a, a better idea or a better sense of how this thing's going to look. It's gonna be a couple of muscles here. Um, there's a fold that goes from the nose all the way down. There's a couple of paddings here as well underneath the mouth. And I would need another video to really go in, in detail about this uh, elements. All of this are the like the general shapes that we normally see. And then of course we have uh, the uh, the muscle that we use for um, for chewing. That's it here, right there. Smooth all of this out. And now we can start blending, right? Like we, we, we can start getting rid of some of the planes, just filling this with like fat and skin and everything that we would normally see. And this is what's going to give us the general like female face shape. 
For the eyes, of course, we would need a, a couple of spheres. I think I'm going to do the eyes real quick. I'm going to say subtool, append. Let's append some eyes. I'm going to scale this down. Eyes are usually aligned to the corner of the mouth. So if we go back here and when we, re we redrew, redraw the mouth, again, the mouth's going to be roughly about there. The center of the eye should be aligned roughly to the center of the, of the mouth. We're going to say C plugin, Subtool Master. We're going to mirror this to the other side. There we go. And now uh, that we have the eyes, we can start working on the eyelids, for instance. And again, when, when doing the blocking, I prefer to keep things simple. So in this case, for instance, the upper eyelids, I'm just going to like block them in like this. As you can see, big blocking right there. And then lower eyelids, same deal. Just a very, very simple blocking. Like that. When seen from the side, the upper eyelids should be farther forward than the uh, lower eyelids. That's another important one. And depending on how young or how old you want your character to look, here's where we would be like changing those specific elements. But again, for 20 minutes, 25 minutes that we've been working on this, this is not bad for a blocking. Um, it definitely looks old, like a like an old uh, woman. So I'm gonna grab my uh, move brush, and if we wanna like uh, change this into more of a if a young woman, we can start like pushing some areas here, sharpening some of the features, softening some of the elements as well with my smooth brush and creating the basic here. I think I'm definitely going to do a, a, a we're going to continue this series because I, I, I can understand if someone looks at the, at the thumbnail of the videos like, really, that's it. It's just 20 minutes, guys. It takes a little bit longer to, to create, uh, like a more interesting um, character here. But for blocking, for base mesh, something that we can use to, to build upon, I think this is a, a good uh, a good one. We can use our move brush to, to make the, the nose smaller. And again, the main thing I'm focusing right now, I'm gonna actually delete the mouth because it's making her look quite old as well. I'm gonna create the barrel of the mouth only. Let's do a little bit of a chin there. Again, a little bit of the of the dip that we normally see beneath the, the elements. Always, always check your silhouettes so that we can move things around and adjust them. This is where we'll have the, the division of the head. We can remove some volume here. And there we go. We can redraw the symmetry line just so that we have the indication. Let's redraw the symmetry line here. That way, uh, because I, again, I'm pretty sure people are going to look at the down and be like, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. I do know it. Just, just, it just takes time, right? So, so I'm going to keep this marks so that it's hopefully people can understand that this is supposed to be a a guide reference okay guys but again let me know in the comments if you want me to continue with this uh, exercise i'll be i'll be happy to do so i'll be happy to to keep on working on this on this head and, and polishing it until it looks very very pretty um again faces are one of those things and especially female faces i found um throughout my career that they're one of those things that definitely need quite a bit of time it usually takes me at least like two or three hours to make sure i have something that i'm i'm happy with uh, but once you get there, it's it's very easy to keep on polishing and just adding the details that you need. It's all about subtlety with uh, with this kind of faces. It's always subtlety because uh, you can't you can't overdo uh, certain things. Otherwise, it starts looking a little bit too. Um, it, it can go into like into the masculine side of things, for instance, and it could also uh, start looking way way too harsh, like a really really harsh uh, character. I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup here. So we're going to be using her for the thumbnail and we want her to look as nice as possible for this again, this initial blocking. So uh, before we finish this, uh, just a couple of um, like, a, like a small summary of the important things. We always look at the silhouette. 
Silhouette should always be a, um, a priority to making sure things look good. And we're also going to be looking at uh, things such as the planes and the depth of the things that we're going to be doing. Okay. It's all about practice. As I've mentioned at the beginning of the video, we need to practice and we need to practice uh, like smart in a smart way so that we, uh, so that we learn all of the things that we need. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to, I'm going to stop it right here. Probably going to add just a couple more like lines to again, make this look a little bit fancier for the thumbnail because people can be very mean in YouTube. Not you guys. If you stick around for this past 30 minutes, that means that you're, you're one of our team. You're part of the family now. And you know that it takes time to, to do this sort of things. Uh, but there's a lot of people that uh, they're just like looking for an easy and fast way to learn 3D. And uh, as we've mentioned before, it's not it's not that easy, right? It takes it takes time, it takes patience, it takes practice, and that uh, and that's what's gonna allow us to to keep on moving forward. So there we go. Hopefully this like basic uh, uh, blocking is good for the algorithm. And uh, that's it for me for today, guys. I'll see you back tomorrow. Make sure to leave us a like, share, subscribe, comments. Comments are always welcome. We're approaching the end of the month. We're going to be uh, giving away courses to random commenters uh, from the past month. So make sure to leave a comment. Give us your opinion. Um, and, uh, and you might be a lucky winner at the end of this month. So that's it, guys. Thank you very much. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.